guys, the snow is falling. We can finally get out of the house. The kids are back to school. Oh my gosh, cabin fever has officially set in. Let's go to the thrift store. Okay, I'm here at the first thrift store. I'm gonna run inside and see what types of gems that I can find. Okay, I didn't find a single thing. It's been like a really long time since I didn't find anything in the thrift store. I mean like not even a personal thing. There was this one dress in there though. Let me tell you about this dress. Okay, there was a dress in there that I kept asking other women to tell me not to try it on. I'm like, I don't need to try this dress on. Talk me out of this. They're like, where would you wear it? Like, I don't care, vacuuming. I wear what I want. I could see, I could wear this on my Friday Night Live. Look at this dress, you guys. It did fit, but I couldn't zip it all the way in the back because, well, I only have two arms and it just wasn't working. <laughs> anyway, it was beautiful and it was $15 and it fit and I left it. There is another little store that I haven't been to in a while. It's just like a secondhand shop, but she has a lot of video game stuff. I'm gonna go see what kinds of video games I can find there today because I have extra time now before I go get my kids and it's downtown, I haven't been there in a while, I probably won't film in there. I'll share with you guys what I get after I leave. Seriously, just found nothing in there. Not a thing. It's not even the same day anymore. Guys, I was so let down by all of those stores the other day. But here's the deal. I am on with Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter on his thrift battle next week. Like, I have to find some fire stuff between now and then. Um, I'm up against the Antique Nomad. If you're watching this, like, I'm scared. I don't have anything to bring to the thrift battle. I need five fire items and currently I have zero and have six days to find stuff. So I'm gonna do a little um, unconventional sourcing and I'm about to go to an antique mall <laughs> to source because I saw the other day, this is kind of the inspiration behind this, Crazy Lamb Lady went to, I guess, her local flea market or it must have been an antique mall or something because the prices. She bought these Lucite grapes for like, they were $90 or $95, but then like 20% off of that. Anyway, I think she gave like $75 for these grapes. She sold them for like $400, $536, I think. Yeah, I think that's the numbers. So she bought them for like 70 something and sold them for over 500. And I'm like, who buys grapes for 70 something dollars to resell? They're plastic grapes. They are not plastic, they are lucite. But I got to thinking, there are some high prices at our antique mall, but there are also some things that are so undervalued at our antique mall. And because people around here don't see the value in a lot of the things that people on eBay see the value in, I bet you I can go to the antique mall and find some stuff to resell. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my camera and I've never taken you guys to the antique mall. Like, let's go! So I'm gonna walk you guys through my trip to the antique mall. This little cabinet had the coolest items in it. Um, like toy guns and things like that, $12.50. I don't think this guy's prices are all that bad, but um, some of the model cars he has like higher prices on. Some of this stuff I feel like has been here for 10 years or more. That guitar was not for sale, but I thought it was cool. And some of you guys that collect guitars might enjoy taking a peek at that. But yeah, he definitely has a lot. I, I almost feel like this is a place for him to store his collection because some of the prices are so high. This booth was um, pretty cool. I stopped to look at the jewelry thumb through here. I didn't really find anything um, that seemed like it was, you know, of any age. This just all seemed like pretty contemporary costume jewelry, so I wasn't interested. I took a second look at this 12 Days of Socks. I couldn't find a size on it. I was hoping to maybe find a size and see if this would fit my 15-year-old um, because he's a huge Star Wars fan, but I didn't find a size on it, so I left these. Um, moving on and looking through the rest of their booth, they have some cool items. Um, I was looking for any thimbles in here because if you're not aware, always look through old sewing uh, equipment because some of the thimbles are like 14 karat gold, 24 karat gold. Um, that's definitely something that you want to look for that has a lot of value. Didn't find any games or DVDs of any value. These coasters were pretty cool. They only wanted $5.95 I think for the set. I just didn't know that I could make, you know, a a good enough profit. And again, I'm not just looking for items to profit. I'm looking for items to go up against the Antique Nomad. Um, I got excited when I found this contemporary coach wallet, but there weren't any vintage pieces. So um, this basket of wallets was kind of a bust. They were playing um, Jim Croce music in here. So it was just putting me in such a good mood. It was um, Croce plays Croce. 
on like Sirius Radio or something. So it was like Jim Croce's son playing Jim Croce. And, um, you know, if I could put time in a bottle, <laughs> I really, really was enjoying that. They had lots of cool items here. I spotted some Ray Dunn back here. So I went back. I did end up looking this item up. It was like a coffee drip over a mug. Really, really cool piece, but it wasn't worth a whole lot. Um, so I left it. Look at this. I feel like this is like a Turkish or Arabian style coffee or tea set. The only one at $15. You guys let me know if this is something I should go back for because I'm more than willing to bet it is still there. This particular booth has 50% off, but even with 50% off, like these Barbies were marked up way too high to make any money off of them. Those like 80s and 90s Barbies just aren't worth um, much more than 90s baseball cards, unfortunately. I found these really beautiful. These must be like 40s uh, nylon pantyhose, but they just, again, weren't worth m a whole lot more you know, online than what they had them for in this booth. And again, I'm looking for fire items. But then I saw these, $14.95, 50% off. So they're like $7.50. This is a bank and she has two little puppies. Come on, like tell me in the comments if you would have picked this up. I will tell you, I did pick this up. I picked it up for me. It is not for sale. Um, this is me as a little mama puppy and my two little baby bears, uh, my little puppies. Um, so I really love mid-century poodles like that that have the puppies attached. Um, this booth is so well organized. Like all the baby stuff is right here together. All of the um, like wedding items are together. All of Look at the, all these little bottles together. The person I feel like that curates this booth really has a love of antiques and they they just like merchandise their items really, really well. And it got me thinking about categories in our eBay stores. Look at these little um, vintage cake toppers. These are beautiful. But again, they weren't really fitting the bill of what I was looking for on this particular day. So I left them. Here's a lot of like needlepoint and embroidered pieces, um, some salt and pepper shakers, some ephemera. And here we find another little random tray of jewelry. I grabbed these because I just recently sold some cufflinks at a pretty decent price. I was looking to see if they had any gold or precious metal, but they didn't. I found some cool clip-on earrings, but they were like $3 and $4 a pair. And I mean, honestly, unless there's something special about them, unless they're a precious metal or really... Um, you know, stellar design or anything. I just, for my sake and my business model, there wasn't enough meat on the bone. If they were a dollar, I might've picked those up, but you know, for three and four dollars, I went ahead and left them there. But I did think that these are awesome prices in an antique booth though. Look at these Valentines I found. I found these for a dollar and a dollar fifty and a dollar ninety nine in this little box. And I thought, oh my gosh, here's my item. And then I looked them up on eBay and they're not worth much more than that. Sometimes you can get them for a dollar a piece. Here is another spot in the same booth that is just so well organized. I thought, you know, it just really shows the extra um, links that they go to um, in this particular booth. I think that everything that they do is really beautiful. This Pyrex little coffee percolator was $14.99. So it wasn't worth a whole lot more than that. I could maybe double my money, but it's just not worth it shipping glass. Um, this guy, I'm trying to see there. I think he's $9.99. He's either $4.99 or $9.99. He was kind of cool, but he's not like a uh, Rushton um, brand or anything like that. These are Tootsie toy cars, and those were pretty cool also. But again, like none of this stuff is stuff that I will allow me to compete against the antique nomad. Like, I don't know. Should I have come to an antique store? Um, this booth is all vintage Christmas. Can we even like, oh my gosh, I should have looked at that tree a little bit more. Okay, so these are all vintage and some semi-contemporary. I'm not going to say they're all vintage, but these are nativity sets. They are so beautiful. There's a ton of ornaments. Um, I don't know why I didn't look at the stockings a little heavier. I guess I was just like so laser focused on finding stuff that maybe I could beat George with. I should have looked at those stockings. I think I'm going to go back and see if any of those stockings are worth a whole lot and if they're well-priced. Um, but I did look at the ornaments on this tree and to, you know, truth be told, if I wasn't saving up for a car right now, I probably would have bought several of these ornaments for me, but I'm trying not to spend a whole lot of extra right now. Uh, more on that in some future videos. These little vintage kids dresses in this booth are so cool. I have bought some of these and sold them before. They had some old purses and hats, so kind of right up my alley. I don't know anything about this stuff though. This vintage carnival glass, I know nothing. And look at all these DVDs. 
like I've never bought anything out of this booth. Um, it's just not my niche, I guess. Um, but they did have these really cool metal tumblers. I don't know if these were originally for like a shake machine or what. Look at this. I don't know if this is Lucite or plastic. $24.99 for the sewing kit. If you think I should go back for that sewing kit, let me know. I know some of those sewing kit boxes can really bring quite a bit of money. And I don't know if I should have left that. I mean, it was $25. So I feel like that's kind of high priced. Um, moving on out of there, I did find this baseball card album. They wanted $50 for it. And currently my husband has two of these plus some loose cards that we have been putting off listing. So I was like for $50, these just look like a bunch of nineties baseball cards. There is a ton of them, but I think I will leave those. If you're like a whatnot seller and you're looking for a bulk of baseball cards, let me know. I have a bunch and, um, I could go back and grab those for you if you want for the $50, you know, plus shipping. Um, anyway, these pins, I finally found something. I bought these pins. Now, I didn't look these up in enough time to go against George, but I bought these for $1.50. You guys know how I feel about, about vintage pens and pencils. Look at this pink Pyrex. This is my color. That is the color that I collect. I think it's gorgeous. This atomic pattern is so 50s. It is just so much that I love about mid-century. Just that daydream of like, we're going to go land on the moon in the space race. I mean, I think that is absolutely magical. They had um, the coolest little salt and pepper shakers and things. This is a separate booth, but look at this. This was only $10.99, 11 bucks. Should I go back for this owl? He's pink. He's like a little cream pitcher. Um, and they had this lamb. The lamb was, I think, yeah, $8.99. This booth always has fair prices. They're not like crazy antique mall prices. Um, I guess, you know, obviously they're turning a profit, but I've gotten several cool things out of here. This belt buckle, the way that the turquoise is laid is kind of like uh, how the Zuni tribe would do it. It was only $9.99. I didn't see any like silver marking or anything on it, so I didn't pick it up since I was, again, laser focused on trying to get, get stuff that would, you know, put me in the competition um, on Primetime Treasure Hunter's channel. So I left that, but it is really cool. I could see myself wearing that, but there's just so many beautiful, beautiful mid-century pieces in that booth. Should I go back for this? $12.95, $0.90. Cents. Um, it's a Fila Neon Light. I think I need to go back for this. There's only one that I saw online. It was on Worth Point, and I don't have Worth Point to look it up. Maybe someone else does, and they could give me um, give me a little bit of assistance there. Uh, this booth has a lot going on in here, and a ton of, I believe everything was costume jewelry, to be honest with you. Um, I just wasn't finding anything, but I wanted to show you guys how many really beautiful things there are. I love metal mesh. I'm a sucker for it. I think this was a cigarette case though. So I definitely left it. Don't believe that was Whiting and Davis, um, but I love Whiting and Davis. Guys, that was pretty non-eventful. Nothing that a bean burrito from Taco Bell can't cure, right? <laughs> Probably the only time you're ever gonna hear anyone ever say that. I actually got the Fiesta veggie burrito without cheese, no sour cream, and then have them grill it. It's $2.17 for lunch, and it is amazing. Veggie Fiesta burrito, no cheese, no sour cream, grilled. Okay guys, I'm seriously gonna be in trouble if I can't find something to go against the Antique Nomad, so uh, I got it like half an hour before the kids need to be picked up from school. Let's run into the thrift store that I originally started at and was disappointed in a couple days ago and see what I can find. Okay, this is getting a little ridiculous. So I walk in there and I'm not kidding guys. This never ever happens. They're like clearing out the store. They haven't brought anything new out since the last time I was in there. They're getting ready for like their spring turnover and they're going to bring out a bunch of new items, but there's nothing new in the store from the last time I was there a few days ago and there was nothing in the store to buy worth flipping. Um, what is going on? I've never had this happen. This is the part of the video where I'm supposed to tell you some grand revelation about like how to get inventory when you can't find any inventory. Um, okay. There's an auction, um, house not far from here. I'm about to get on, um, their website and see if they're having an auction this weekend. Cross your fingers and pray to God that they're having an auction. What am I going to do? I need some really fire stuff for this competition, you guys.